In this video, we'll build a pure CSS image slider. So this image slider comes from my course linked in the video description called Pure HTML and CSS from Scratch. And the image slider takes up two lessons, which comes directly after the building of the Pure CSS navigation menu. So those of you who have been subscribed for a while might know that I have a popular older Pure CSS image slider video, and I'll link that in the video description, but I felt that I explained it better in my new course. So I'm gonna post that here. And as I mentioned, I'll link the course in the description. Also remember to leave any questions you have in the video comments. So without further ado, here is the new and improved Pure CSS image slider. In this lesson, we'll cover the HTML for the CSS image slider. So you may remember from the HTML5 semantics lesson that we used the figure element with HTML5 for the orange background color we're seeing. So for our image slider, we'll also use the figure tag, but first we're gonna wrap it with a div ID that we're gonna call slider. So I'll add the hashtag for the ID, then slider, and hit enter. Then inside of this, I'll have the figure tag, then inside of the figure tag, we'll have an image for each slide. So I'm going to write out the image tag and add img forward slash slider dash one dot jpg. And then I'll copy this and paste it in four times for the rest of the images. And all we'll have to do is change the number for the image afterwards. So I'll paste all these out and then number them from one to four with the last image staying as slider dash one because the slider is going to go back to the first slide on the last rotation. So basically we're gonna go from slider five to slider one mid slide. So we'll want the first and last picture to be the same, which we'll cover in more detail in the CSS. So now that we have all of our images laid out, let's jump into the CSS for the image slider. So the first thing that I wanna do is make it so the images only take up 100% of the screen. I'll also mention that since we have our slider content added in the HTML, any time from now we can go and take away that clear fix in the CSS that we added previously and see how it affects our header. So let's start by adding IMG because we're gonna set the maximum width for all images to 100%. This will contain the images in the slider as well as the images that we'll add later on in the project. So now we get to the interesting part of creating a CSS only image slider. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the figure tag that we added, but I'm going to first select the div ID um, in addition to the figure tag in case you wanna use that somewhere else in your design. So let's add the hashtag slider for the slider ID followed by the figure tag. So now we'll want all five images lined up next to one another. So we'll use width, 500% to make room for each one of the five images. So now if we check out the slider, we'll be able to see that there are images on the right, but we don't have all of them there yet because we'll need to remove the spacing as well as reduce the width of the images inside of the slider. So let's target the images inside of the slider specifically with the slider ID, the figure tag, and then image. And I'm gonna give each image a width of 20%. So without making this too complicated, 20% of 500% is 100%. So now our images are contained inside of the width of the screen once again, except for the spacing on either side of the figure element, which we see here, and there's some spacing in between the images as well. So let's do away with that spacing by using margin zero for the figure tag. And then we'll also pull it to the left so there's no space off to the left with left zero. And this will allow us to do away with the um, last bit of space that's in between each image so we can have each one of them lined up next to one another within that 500% range once we have the images themselves floating to the left. So I'm gonna add float left here. And then the images will take up a true 20% so we can have all five images lined up next to one another in line. 
So now what I'd like to do to get the sliding started is I'm going to add a bit of CSS that I'll explain in just a moment and I'm going to comment out. The first is we're going to change the positioning from static to relative. Static is the inherent position. So I'll come back to this in addition to the animation. So we're going to use the animation CSS property which we can add a time to or animation duration which is a CSS property itself with it set to 30 seconds and instead of having an animation name property, we'll name it slider. Then for the animation iteration count, we'll have it set to infinite, so the CSS animation never stops. So similar to how we would combine three different CSS properties with border, like border, three pixel, solid, then the color, with animation here, we've combined three different CSS properties into one with our animation duration at 30 seconds, the animation name slider, and the animation iteration count set to infinite. So we're gonna have our slider slide for 30 seconds before it gets back to repeating itself infinitely. For now though, I'm gonna comment this out with a CSS comment to make it easier to explain once we get to the next step. So before we get to the um, step of making it actually slide with the animation, I'm going to hide the overflowing images off to the right of the screen, so we'll only see the one image taking up 100% of the screen width. So to do that, let's select the slider ID, which is the outermost element or the parent element, and add overflow hidden. So with that, as I mentioned, we're only going to be able to see the first slide or 20% of that 500% width for the figure element. So now what we'll do is though we have the animation duration set with the 30 seconds, which we'll add back from the CSS comment, we're going to use something to control the slider similar to how we use at media for media queries to control the CSS at different screen widths. We're going to use something called keyframes. So at keyframes, followed by the name of our animation, which is slider. So at keyframes slider, and then in curly brackets, we'll be able to control the positioning of the slider. So once again, this is called keyframes, and the slider matches the name of the animation that we added for the figure element. So for keyframes, a really great example is from the W3Schools website, which we've been looking at throughout the course. And they have a really great example of keyframes further down the page, which shows how we can control the animation by adding different sort of percentage breakpoints or animation breakpoints as opposed to the breakpoints that we know about with media queries. So this is a really great example where there are four different points in the keyframe where the element will change its animation. So the animation name here is called my move instead of a slider from left to right, but we can at least see how the animation keyframes work by changing the values. So on the left, we have the percentage of the five second value throughout the animation from zero to 100, and we can change the values from the top with pixels for how far or how close we want it to be based on the percentage throughout the duration of the animation. So if I change the last value to zero from 100, we're gonna start at the top and end at the top. It's gonna shoot all the way down to 400 pixels at 25%, and then slowly go back up to 50 pixels before ending at zero pixels at the very top. So with the third value at zero pixels, it's going to sit up top for a little while before it shoots back down to 400 pixels. And this is sort of what we're going to do with the image slider is we're going to have it stop briefly for each slide before it goes to the next percentage as it makes the complete rotation around all of our image slides. So let's get back over to our keyframes CSS so we can experiment with the different percentages and positioning of our slider. So let's start at 0% and we're going to use left positioning. So we'll start with left 0, which is basically what we're seeing already, which is the same CSS we added for the figure element. So let's use the midway point of 50% next and I'm going to add left negative 
250%. So this will sort of be in between the second and third image if each one is 100%. And I'm gonna pause the video here for a moment to let you know that I forgot the semicolon after 250%. So even though in CSS3 it'll work with missing semicolons, I recommend to include it for best practice and to get in the habit of double checking your code. So now let's move on to the 100% point, which would be the end point of the slider. Then let's add left negative 500% and see where we end up once we remove the CSS comment around our position relative and animation CSS. So as you can see, it's automatically started sliding once we removed the CSS comments and it's gonna slide sort of to the midway point right here before it continues on and goes all the way to the end. So 250% brought us in between the two slides. So if we change this to 50% as an example, and instead of 30 seconds, I'll change it to 10 so we don't have to wait so long. Now it's gonna stop in between the first and second slides right here, basically, and then it's gonna shoot all the way to the end and overshoot because we're using negative 500 instead of 400. So 500 would bring us to a sixth slide while 400 will bring us to the fifth slide. So scrolling to the left, 400%, we still have 100% left over for the last image. So we go from 50% all the way up to the end at 400%. So if we were to do away with infinite, it would stop at the very last slide and if we were to do away with um, position relative, we'll find that it's required because the inherent position static um, isn't gonna allow the element to slide. So now that we know how to start off the animation and get it to sort of pause at the 50% point before it goes all the way to the end at 400%, let's see how the slider picks back up using infinite from the end to the beginning, which as we know, we have the same image for in our HTML. So let's change the last image from slider-1 to slider-3 and see how it ends up with the last slide. So once we get to the last side, you'll see it change um, midpoint. So it's gonna sort of switch right to the first slide before that first slide starts sliding. So with the last image set to one, we have the smooth transition. So if you end up adding more images and adjusting the animation duration, just remember to have your last image the same as the first image. So let's make the image slider stay on the first image up until 20% by adding 20% and then left zero. This way it's gonna stay there until we transition on the next percentage queue. So let's say that we want each image to sort of stay there for 20% and we want the transition to make up 5%. So let's bump it up to 25% now and that's where we'll have it set to left negative 100% where we'll start sort of sitting on the second image in view. So now between 20% and 25%, we're going to the second image, but we'll want it to sit on that second image for 20% as well. So let's bump it to 45% with the same left 100% value. So again, we'll use 45%, so that's 20% between 25 and 45 and then we'll keep it at left negative 100%. So we'll go from the first slide, zero to 20, transition to the second slide at 20 to 25, and sit on the second slide from 25 to 45. And whoops, I forgot the negative. Okay, so now we'll sit on the first image, we'll go to the second and we'll sit there, and now we're still scrolling all the way to the end. So we'll do the same intervals. So let's bump it up to 50% now because we want it to make the 5% transition to the third image. So we'll say 50% and then instead of negative 100% for the third image, we'll have it at negative 200%. Okay, so that's gonna get us to the third image, but we'll also want it to stay on that third image for the 20%. So let's use 70 here, and we'll keep the same left negative 200%. 
So now that we have it sitting on the third slide with negative 200%, let's do the 5% transition to 75% to make it to the fourth slide by using left negative 300%. And then we'll have it sit on that fourth slide for 20% because right now it's going to basically transition all of through the slides except for sitting on the last one before getting back to the beginning. So we'll say 95% here to give us the 20% duration on the fourth slide with negative 300%. And then the 5% in between 95% and 100 is going to be the 5% duration to slide us back to the beginning at 0% and left 0 where we'll sit on the first slide. So first, second, third, fourth, and then transitioning back to the first with slider-1.jpg. So I hope this wasn't too overwhelming with all of the percentage values that we went over. You may want to watch it back if you're a little bit confused and see how the percentages match up with the 5% interval and 20% sitting on each image. Also, you're welcome to change the animation duration. The original design has a duration of 30 seconds, but I'm going to add a couple of zeros here so it doesn't slide in the background as we build out the rest of the design.